you really have to be conscious of your time. And this particular technique worked well for me during the first couple quarters of didactic CRNA school. And that's because our program was started out with maybe not as much material and then each quarter it ramped up. And so by the end of the year, we had almost double the amount of material per quarter than we did the first quarter. And so it's kind of like the frog in boiling water, right? You just, you set them in there when it's nice and warm and then slowly it starts boiling. And by the end, you're like, holy cow, this is a lot of material. Hello, future CRNA. Welcome to CRNA School Prep Academy podcast. I have a very special episode lined up for you today, and it is part of our guest host series where I am bringing current SRNAs on the show for you as a guest host on the CSBA podcast. And my thought process behind doing this is I wanted you to hear from current students, a variety of current students who are at different stages of their CRNA journey and really allow you to kind of step into their world and hear them talk about what it's like to be a current student dealing with things like difficult preceptors or um, different uh, anesthesia topics, clinical topics, maybe even things like time management, stress management, things like that. I think this is going to be, these episodes are gonna be gold and I hope you enjoy as much as I always do hearing from current students. I know for a fact that the reason why Serena School Prep Academy is where it is today and the reason why I have learned so much is from diving all in, listening to current students, along with CRNAs, share a wealth of information and really kind of taking all of that information and kind of compiling it into kind of the system that we have created today. And I know that you're doing the same thing by tuning into the show week after week, developing your own method, your own strategy, your own system for success. So I hope you enjoy these guest episodes. Let's go ahead and get into today's show. Hey everyone, welcome to the CRNA School Prep Academy podcast. My name is David Warren and I'll be your guest host today. Today, we're gonna be talking about study habits and studying in CRNA school, tips and tricks and things I wish I had known whenever I started CRNA school. A little bit about me, I'm a prior emergency medicine nurse practitioner for about eight years before attending CRNA school. I'm currently a second year nurse anesthesia resident out on the West Coast in California. I'm in a front-loaded DNAP program, and I'm currently in the clinical phase. The first 15 months of my program were on campus, in person, doing all the didactic stuff for CRNA school. And I really want to share with you today study tips, things I've picked up along the way, and most importantly, what I wish I had known prior to going into CRNA school as far as study habits and as far as all things studying getting the content down and taking those exams. The first thing before we jump into the content that I want to share with you is, is I want you to go read a book. I want you to read the book, Make It Stick, The Science of Successful Learning. Make It Stick, The Science of Successful Learning. This is a very intriguing book. I didn't find this book until I was like 12 to 16 weeks into the didactic phase of my CRNA program. And I was getting overwhelmed and I was looking for resources, things that would help me study. And so I ran across this book, some YouTube reviews of it. And there's a lot of information out there on this particular book, but I picked it up and I read it. I read it on on the break actually between my first quarter and my second quarter. And things drastically changed for me when I picked this book up, when I read it and I started implementing some of those things. And I want to share with you a few of the things that I picked up from that book that really changed my study habit, but I would highly, highly, highly encourage you, especially if you aren't in CRNA school yet, this is the perfect time. Pick the book up, pick the book up, read it and implement some of those principles. It's called Make It Stick, The Science of Successful Learning. And it really goes into the science of studying and the science of successful learning. And that's super interesting because in our clinical practice, we use evidence-based practice on the daily basis, essentially. And especially in school, we're learning those evidence-based practice techniques. And we don't really use that when it comes to study habits. How often do you read or hear about somebody talking about evidence-based practice when it comes to studying and retaining information? I can speak for myself and say that I had not heard of that. Everybody says kind of do your own thing. And I feel like in school, especially college and grade school, there's not a big emphasis 
on teaching you how to study. It's more of like, okay, here's the material, learn it. Not here's the material, let's go through how you're actually going to learn that material. That's not taught. And that's, I think that's a huge disservice in our, in our culture and in our country is not teaching how to study. And so this book really delves into some of those basic principles of how to study and what the research says about the best way to study is. And, and I, I find it super interesting. I crave things like this. I, it's fascinating to me. So go pick that book up, go read it. It will do you so well. Even if you're not going to CRNA school, if you're going to some other professional school, if you're in nursing school, where, wherever you're at in your journey, it will serve you well. So go read that first and foremost. And now I'm going to share some of the things that I wish I had known study-wise going into anesthesia school, what would have helped me out. I've written some things down, so I'm going to intermittently be looking down to get these points across to you guys. So the first thing is, the first thing I want to get across to you is the most important principle is what's called active recall, active recall. And if you're not sure, you haven't heard of active recall, essentially active recall is quizzing yourself or testing yourself. The research says that mindless note-taking, writing things down, reading notes over and over and reading books or reading chapters in books, that will not help you learn. That may you may pick up some ideas and you may pick up a few things here and there, but that's not the evidence-based way to learn and to study. Active recall is the way science says, evidence-based practice says, is the way to learn and the way to study. And active recall is simply quizzing yourself and testing yourself. And I really want to share with you what that looked like for me in my program and how I implemented that. And so is what I would do just practically, whenever we would go to lecture, a lot of the times our professors would post a PowerPoint with a voiceover, or we would have an online lecture and I would uh, either an online or in-class lecture, I would record that. And then I would go back, you know, I would pay attention to make some notes while I'm in the lecture. I would just try to listen that first time around and pick up things. And then I would go back home, I would listen to it again. And the second time around, I would really, uh, on each PowerPoint slide, I would try to make note of the general idea. What is that slide trying to get across to me? And then I would make quiz questions based on that slide. So I would take a blank piece of paper or a, I would pull up a Word document on my computer and I would write slide one or slide two. And then I would make open-ended active recall questions based on what that slide said. And it wouldn't be like multiple choice questions. Like I'm not going to, you know, create multiple choice questions and A, B, C, and D. Although you can do that, I, I was tell you right now, time's not going to allow that for you if you're in anesthesia school. But I would create these open-ended questions, things that I could go through and things that I could answer based on what that slide was about. And I would do that for every single slide in that presentation. Sometimes it was 20 slides, sometimes it was 200 slides. It really depended on the content and what you know that particular PowerPoint was over. But that's the idea of active recall, right? I would go through and I would make these open-ended questions, questions that I, after I closed the PowerPoint out, I could pull this up on my iPad and I could read the question and then I would be able to either answer the question fully or I would have to go back and study that material and I would practice. I would, I would have two screens. I would have my active recall question set on one screen and the PowerPoint on the other screen. And then I would go through and try to read the question, answer the question, look back at the PowerPoint, see if I got it. And I would essentially teach myself the content that was on that PowerPoint slide. And that's how I did that. That's how, that is the main way one of the mainstays of how I studied was doing active recall. Now, there are several different ways to go about doing this. You can do this on a Word document. Like I said, you can list slide one and, and just you know list yourself questions there. Slide two, list yourself questions. You can also use certain apps. You can use apps like Quizlet and Anki. Those are good resources. I'll be quite honest with you, though, whenever I was in school or in the didactic phase of the program, it was extremely challenging for me to find the time to create this material and then study it because creating it took several hours, depending on how long the content was. And then to try to go back and study the material was even more challenging. Sometimes I would run out of time. I would I would use all of my time making these questions. And then I was left with, okay, now I've made them and the test is tomorrow. And it didn't really work that well. And so 
you really have to be conscious of your time. And this particular technique worked well for me during the first couple quarters of didactic CRNA school. And that's because our program was started out with maybe not as much material and then each quarter it ramped up. And so by the end of the year, we had almost double the amount of material per quarter than we did the first quarter. And so it's kind of like the frog in boiling water, right? You just, you set them in there when it's nice and warm and then slowly it starts boiling. And by the end, you're like, holy cow, this is a lot of material. And looking back, you know, when you're at the end of the year and you're looking back at what you studied at the beginning of the year, you're like, wow, that was not that much material at the time considering what we have now. And so that's the thing that you, that you might run into and I ran into as well is the time. It's just so time consuming with the active recall. And so you may, these apps, the Anki apps and the Quizlet apps are great if you have the time for it. And the best thing that I can tell you to do is if you have some study buddies or some friends in your class and you guys can break this content down together and each person take a chunk, you can really get it out of the way. If you're trying to do this all yourself, it's going to be very challenging. Not to say you can't do it. It's just going to be very challenging. And so consider that. Consider having a friend or ha having some buddies in a study group, even if you're not like coming together and actually studying together. If, if two or three of you are working on the same content, working on those active recall questions, it will save you so much time, so much time. So consider that if, you, if that's something that you're able to do, if you have friends and you want to divide the content up. Um, I did a lot of this myself. And again, it, it becomes a time issue. Do you actually have the time to do all of this? Um, if you have multiple people breaking things up at one time, it becomes much, much easier. And that would be my suggestion is, um, is if you had three or four friends that you could all split this content together, the active recall questions will be much more manageable at that point. And you could probably even use Quizlet or Anki. Um, and this is not the video to go into those two apps, but look those up, A-N-K-I, Anki or Quizlet. They both essentially do the same thing. Um, the app for your, for Anki, the app for your computer, I believe is like $10, but the app for your phone is free. So one of the Quizlet's free, I believe for the basic subscription. Um, but it's, it's 10, you know, 10 or $15. It would be worth your time if you have the time to do that. And if you have multiple people who'd be willing to split that content up with you. So that would be my recommendation. Okay. Point number two is going to be your study habits are not going to be the same as they were in your undergrad degree. Uh, they're not going to be the same. It's just the reality of the situation. Uh, and it wasn't even the same for me. I'll give you my example. So I obviously was in nursing school and I was in NP school. So I've been in a graduate program already. I've taken advanced pharmacology, patho, physical assessment, and then all of the, you know, management classes that go with the NP school. Um, and my study habits changed. My study habits were so different then than they are now. And it really changes based on the depth of material that you have and the, the, um, the amount of material that you have, the amount and the depth of material that I have now is significantly more compared to what I had in my prior graduate degree. And so my study habits changed and that's something you're going to have to accept and move on because there's a lot of, there are a lot of people, myself included, that when I was in nursing school, I didn't have to study that much. Like I could read the notes and I could kind of go over it in my head, you know, those bad habits that we talked about earlier of just reading notes over and over again, that's uh, according to evidence-based practice, evidence-based research, that's not the way to learn. That's not the way to like make it stick. And so I would just read those notes and that worked for me at the time. Uh, and so I got away with it in nursing school. And then um, my study habits changed a bit when I was in NP school, I did more of the active recall, but maybe not to the degree that I did here in anesthesia school. But then when I got to anesthesia school, I was like, well, I already have my study habits down. Like I've been through this before. I've been through a graduate program. I've been to nursing school. Like it shouldn't be that bad. And then when the amount of material hits, you're like, okay, well, that's going to change things. And I think everybody goes through that. And you don't really get that until you're in that situation. Because I thought the same thing. I was like, it's not gonna be that bad. Like what could you possibly be learning? How in depth can it be? And then when you finally get there, you're like, okay, you know, that's legit. People weren't lying. <laughs> it actually gets way more intense than you were anticipating. So your study habits will change. What worked for you in nursing school and what worked for you, maybe if you have another degree, may not necessarily work for you in anesthesia school. It might. You just have to try and see. Um, for me, when I was in school, my prior programs, I would take note cards. I would either read notes over and over, or I would take flashcards, like actual index cards, 
and I would write things, you know, on, on the back, essentially what Quizlet and Anki does, except the, the like handwritten form. And so I would write those things on those cards and I would flip the cards back and forth. And so by the end of the year, you know, I'd have a stack this tall of index cards. Uh, and that just wasn't, I tried that first quarter of CRNA school. I, I legit got index cards, went back to my old ways and I realized it was not going to work because there is so much material. I don't have the time of day to write down all of these things on the index cards. There's not enough time. And so that's the thing you run into. And that's a, that's the theme across this whole uh, episode here is time, time management, because time is going to get the best of you if you don't have this stuff figured out before you hit the ground running. It did me. Like I remember the first exam, I was trying to do those note cards and I was like, this isn't working. I don't have enough time. I've gotten through half the material and I don't have a chance to study. Like it was bad. And so consider the time aspect. How long is it going to take you to prepare to actually study? And I think we we end up thinking about how long is it going to take me to learn this material? And we don't think about how long is it going to take me to prepare to study? And that's a thing that we really need to consider. How long will it take me to prepare? Hey, future CRNA, another daily dose of inspiration from a CRNA School Prep Academy student. Thank you, thank you, thank you, CRNA School Prep Academy. I have applied to Case Western four times and got rejected three times. Those rejections happened before I found CSBA. After my third rejection, I found an amazing mentor, Haley, through NTN's mock interview service, who told me what I need to do over the next year. I'm someone who did not do well in nursing school at the beginning with a 2.7 GPA in undergrad and a 2.74 in RN school. I didn't know there would ever be any hope for me, but I worked my butt off to get a 3.8 in my RN to BSN, and I got my CCRN at the same time. I took some advising from the program director who recommended that I take advanced pathophysiology. I got an A in that course. I continued to precept, do charge nurse on my units, and participate in some sort of committee. When I decided to do travel nursing, I was concerned I'd be looked at different. My program director at this time said while they take travelers, they found that travel nurses tend to take easier assignments than the program usually likes their candidates to take. I happened to be a charge nurse and preceptor on my current travel assignment. The director emphasized that I needed to mention this, which I did because it put me apart from the other travelers. I also took my CSC this application year, which helped me study a lot sooner than I did in the past. I thought despite my efforts to consistently improve and prepare for my final interview at my top choice, my interview went poorly. I chose the first day, the first time slot, and I was more confident in my preparedness thanks to CSBA. Despite me not feeling the best, I wasn't going to give up. While working uh, Hurricane Ian in Florida, I got a decision letter. I was accepted. I'm still in disbelief that after four attempts and three rejections, I finally got in. I couldn't have done it without CSBA, Haley and the amazing mock interview mentors who have helped prepare me along the way. Use this service. It will make a difference. Thank you to all the Academy for helping me achieve what I thought was impossible. Endless thank yous. Dear future CRNA, I love this share and you know who you are. So congratulations. I'm so incredibly proud of you. And if you're listening to this story, I would love to be able to help you as well. Be sure to sign up to, for our free future CRNA newsletter just by clicking the link below in the show notes or comments. Cheers to your future. Now back to the show. So point number two, your habits will change based on what they were previously. Um, if you're anything like me, you, you know, the habits that you had before in your prior degrees may not work. They might work. You can try it and see. But for me, they didn't work. And you have to be willing to abandon that and try something new. So, okay. Point number three. Um, you really want to avoid the mindless note-taking. That's I kind of hinted at that earlier. You really want to avoid like taking your PowerPoint and writing little notes down to the side, going to slide two, writing little notes down to the side. Um, we call that mindless note-taking. And that's, that's not what evidence-based practice says is the best way to retain information. You will retain some information that way, but more than anything, you'll just be making notes and going back, making notes and reading your notes over and over and over again is not the evidence-based way to study. It's not what research says is the best way to retain that information and to be able to produce that information out on an exam. Because let's be real, on an exam in anesthesia school, it's not going to just ask you to regurgitate content that you had on your PowerPoint slide. You're going to have to take that information that's on the PowerPoint slide and apply it to certain situations and apply it to principles. You're, you, it's, it's more than just taking notes and memorizing what you write. You truly have to get it. You have to like understand it. And so, and it really comes into play with the pharmacology and the physiology 
like some of the anatomy stuff you can just strictly memorize because when you're memorizing bones and muscles and nerves, like that's not going to change. But whenever you start understanding, whenever you start learning the physiology behind that and the pathophysiology, you truly have to understand it to get it and to to be able to to be successful on an exam because those exam questions aren't just going to ask you to regurgitate material about physiology it's going to ask you to apply your physiologic knowledge to a patient situation where you may be giving medications and so it may not be a direct physiology question but to get the question right you have to understand the physiology behind it so avoid that mindless note taking because that's, that's really a bad habit to get into. You're just going to be wasting time is essentially what you're going to be doing. You're going to be wasting time. You're going to be writing things down. And if you're not truly understanding what's going on there, it's it's not going to work out well. So I would, I would highly encourage you to, um, to understand what's on that slide and not to just be mindlessly taking notes about what the professor says. And that's something that I had to learn the hard way. I did that as well. I, I would mindlessly take notes and I would go back and read those notes and expect to get it. Be and then I would have find out on the exam is the professor's not asking what they said. They're asking you to apply that principle and to apply that knowledge that you have to an exam question. And it's very different. And no, you don't really get that until you're in the situation and you realize, okay, I way understudied for this exam. Um, and that kind of leads me into my next point on this same thing here is understanding is really the most important thing that you can do is, is understand that material. Because whenever you're in the clinical setting, you're not going to be faced with a multiple choice question. You're going to have to understand those principles and those things that you learned in the didactic phase. Even when you're like in your simulation lab, you're going to have to understand those principles that you went over and you're going to be able to, you're going to have to apply those physiologic principles, those pharmacologic principles, those assessment principles. You're going to be able to, you're going to have to apply that to a patient situation. And it's not going to be multiple choice. Like you're going to have to understand, truly understand what's going on. And so if you, if, Taking notes is not inherently bad, but if you're just reading the notes over and over without understanding, that's where it becomes a problem because you have to, you have to be able to understand the content because if you don't understand the content, unfortunately, you, you're not going to be successful. Uh, you can regurgitate all the content you want, um, but you're not going to be successful at, at producing that content on an exam. Find something that works and then don't be afraid to change it up if it stops working. And that's the thing that a lot of people run into, myself included, is we find something that works and we expect it to work the entire time. And when it stops working, we kind of like fall apart. And that's something that I experienced. So my first few quarters, I did the active recall thing, like putting the questions on the side, having my PowerPoint here, making the questions. By the time my fourth quarter rolled around, there was so much information and not enough time that I didn't have enough time to prepare to study. And so... I would like start these active recall questions and I would just run out of time. There's not enough time in the day for me to like go through that material to create it and then to study it. And so I had to find something different. And it's what I did is I started collaborating with some of my colleagues in CRNA school and we would import the PowerPoint into a Word document. And then we would all take turns uh, either writing summaries of those PowerPoint slides, like the main ideas, or we would transcribe what the professor said into the PowerPoint slide on that Word document. And then I would use that Word document to actually study. By this time around, I'd been doing the active recall question thing for almost a year and a half, or almost a year now. And so I could look at a slide and I could create questions in my head. And so when I was looking at those notes, even though I didn't have the questions written down, I was still coming up with questions in my head as I was studying that material to regurgitate it back to myself, to explain to myself and to test myself. And that's really what it comes down to. It doesn't matter how you test yourself, but that's the best way to do it is testing yourself, being able to explain that material back to yourself or to somebody and being able to quiz yourself and get those questions right. And so that's what I did. Uh, and you have to be willing to do that. You have to be willing to change it up if it's not working and there are just sometimes it's not going to work. Like for instance, you're going to run out of time. You're not going to have time to do your notes. You're going to have time to make your active recall questions. You're not going to have time to do your Quizlet. You have to be able to pivot and try something different. And if it doesn't work, you realize, you know, you take an exam and you do poorly on that exam, switch it up. Don't just keep doing the same thing over and over. You have to be willing to change. That's the biggest thing that I want to get across to you today is that even if it's not working, don't keep doing the same thing. Pivot, change, do something else. Talk to talk to your friends, see what they're doing. 
change it up. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over if you're not successful. Now, if you're successful and you're doing well on your exams, obviously keep doing what you're doing. But if it stops working or you run out of time, you have to be willing to change. You have to be willing to pivot and try something different. That's the biggest point that I want to get across to you today is be willing to change and be willing to try something new. If it doesn't work, don't do it again. If it works, do it until it stops working and then try something different. That's really what it comes down to. Comment below with your questions or your study tips. Again, read that book, Make It Stick, The Science of Successful Learning. It changed my study life for the better. I spent less time studying, more time retaining the information, and it really, really helped. So comment below. Let me know your study habits or your study techniques. If you have any video suggestions or content you want to see specifically from me, comment below. Let me know what that is. I would love to produce content that you guys are interested in and that would help you out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Teacher CRNA, as always, I appreciate you and your loyalty. Thank you so very much for tuning in this week. I'd love to hear from you, so screenshot this episode and share it to your IG stories with your biggest takeaway. Don't forget to tag me at Sierra School Prep Academy so I can personally thank you. Be sure to head over to SierraNaSchoolPrepAcademy.com to check out our blog and gather free resources to help you along your Sierra journey. Stay strong, and I'll see you next week.